This brings us back to our earlier discussion because the Republicans, the conservatives used to be, you know, for better or for worse, the, the party that was more associated with moral values, like family values, and they would get shit for being too, you know, highbrow, for being too judgmental, for lecturing others on how they're supposed to live. And I remember Roger Ailes used to say, you know, conservatives are, are worried about this. They don't want to be called a hypocrite, but at least they're trying. At least they're trying. Um, this is what I'm worried about, you know, that, that Savannah, that, that the answer is not to just abandon all principle and morals and be like them. You know, who wants to be like this woman in Virginia? You know, and that's not to say anybody's without sin, right? Like everybody is with sin and we're all gonna mm -hmm. fall down on the job. We're all gonna do things we're embarrassed of. That doesn't mean you can't look at this conduct or the conduct that we've been discussing and say, that's wrong. I don't want it. I don't like it. And I, I wouldn't vote for it. And in this situation, this woman's not even yet elected. They have a chance to stop her. Exactly. There's no more shame in our society. And like you just talked about too, uh, it, it is a major issue. Uh, instead of this politician coming forward and again, apologizing for this, saying that it was indeed inappropriate. We as a society double down and say, no, she's the victim. We need to be covering for her uh, because this was an attack on her privacy. No, she made these public herself. And this again, goes back to the degradation of our morals and our values, where now we're not even trying, we're completely throwing them out the window. And it's really just heartbreaking to see. You know, I was reading another story, too, about how because of the way John Fetterman dresses, now the way that they dress in the Senate, well, you don't have to wear a suit and tie. Now, a lot of people oh, might read horrible. that story and be like, oh, yeah, OK, whatever. Yeah, why is it important? It is important because we are the United States of America. We are supposed to be a world superpower. Not only that, but we should have... Uh, you know, just some type of pride in our country, some type of pride in our leaders and our politicians, some type of morals or values. When you have a health secretary pretending to be a woman and just absolutely degrading what it even means to be a woman, it just goes to show that we don't care about our country anymore. We have an entire generation that's been raised to hate our country. And that's why we're in such a decline right now. So uh, again, even the fact that this woman is running and the fact that she's being protected just goes to show where our society is at, where culture is at, that yes, we are God, the society. If you look at the statistics of the amount of, you know, people going to church from generation to generation, we are in one of the generations, Gen Z, that goes to church the least of all. And we see that reflected every single day. And it's, it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I remember when I was growing up, my dad, uh, who is an English uh, scholar and education scholar would say, I, he'd say the fancy words at dinner. And I'd always say, speak English. Can't understand you. And he would always say, Megan, I will not lower my vocabulary to meet yours. You must raise yours to meet mine. And we have lowered the standard in the Senate to meet that of John Fetterman. That's what we've mm -hmm. done. We're, we're in, instead of stopping the, the shorts and the hoodie, we've embraced it. Now they're all gonna look like schleps when they're in there doing the people's business. It's disgraceful. Yeah, well, we have a lazy and weak culture where people think that these kind of things are okay. Instead of having any sort of pride in yourself or pride in the way you look, it's just, oh, it doesn't really matter. Nothing really matters. Everything's subjective. The only thing that really matters, again, is being a part of this church of leftism. If you have the right, quote unquote, right ideas, according to these people, you can do anything. It does not matter what you do as long as you believe in the Black Lives Matter stuff, believe that you can have an abortion, quote unquote, abortion after birth, believe that someone is a woman and when they're really a man, uh, climate change, all these things, as long as you believe in all this stuff, you can do anything you want and be as lazy and mediocre and miserable and, and ugly and terrible as possible because that's what they want. They, they don't want a world of, of beautiful things and beautiful people. You know, just to be frank, they don't want that. They want this ugly, dumbed down world where it's easy to control people because they're lazy and look for the easy mint of life. Well, this, this is why, just to put a period on the Russell Brand discussion, people are reluctant to go down this lane because even if you believe everything that's been alleged against him, why is he getting targeted? Why, why aren't we doing the deep dive on the more left-leaning Hollywood actors or people out there with their platforms, right? Guys hosting more left-wing shows. Why aren't we doing that? I mean, I think people, I don't think he's wrong that he became a lot more interesting to these reporters because of his politics, which is what makes a lot of us say, I don't care. But that's why I land in like, he shouldn't be canceled. You know, like if he has legal problems, it should play out in, the, in a legal forum, but he shouldn't be canceled. If the consumer wants to keep listening to Russell Brand, they should absolutely have that opportunity. There's a comedian out there right now, Hassan Minaj, who's rumored to be potentially taking over for, on The Daily Show, 
who's got a long list of lies. My God, he's never stopped lying about his fake uh, grievances on race and so on. They were completely exposed by the New Yorker in a spectacular way. The left doesn't care. He's getting a total pass, no problem. He's a serial fabulist, making up terrible stories about cops in our country to make himself look like a victim. Where's the deep dive on him? Thank you, New Yorker, for doing it. But I'm just saying in too often, too, in too many instances, the left gets the pass and nobody does the deep dive and the Russell Brands of the world get the scrutiny. Millions of Americans earn and use credit card rewards. A few big box retailers want to take those rewards away. That's according to the Electronics Payments Coalition, a sponsor of today's episode. Rewards you may use on groceries and school supplies, cash back to save on gas and grow small businesses, and travel miles to make memories. The so-called Credit Card Competition Act would eliminate credit card rewards. No more travel miles and no more cash back. Visit handsoffmyrewards.com to learn more. And if you would like to help them, tell your legislator to stand up to the retail giants and to support consumers and small businesses. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.